Hello, great friends. Here, Mr. G, and we are going to be doing another question related to motion. Okay. Now, this question says to investigate the change in position of a trolley traveling down its loop. A runway is set up as shown in the sketch below. Now, let's quickly have a look to this picture here. Now, what we have here. First of all, we have a trolley. This here, you can see in the picture, it's shown, is a trolley. The trolley is attached to a ticket tape. This is a ticket tape. Now, what is a ticket tape? Ticket tape is a tape of paper that have this a form, tape of paper, very thin tape of paper. That is what we call ticket tape. Now, this is attached, the trolley is attached to the ticket tape and the ticket tape is passing through in this region here, through the ticket timer. Now, a ticket timer is a device that makes ticks. It's a device that makes ticks after a certain time. So, what you will find in the ticket tape is obvious the tape, and you will find dots that are the ticks that the ticket tape is doing on the ticket tape, or the ticket time is doing on the ticket tape. Now, this uh, ticks are separated by a certain distance. Now, the time between each of those two points is going to be the same and is going to be called period. But we later on can analyze this one in detail. Now, okay. Now, this is the ticket tape. This is what is happening in this picture. So, as this troll is moving down, the ticket timer is making ticks on the ticket tape that is attached to the trolley. And then here, this is the tape that came out of that analysis. Now, note here, we don't have all the ticks. The ticks were there, but were removed after they analyzed. Or they were there, but they just put um, a mark certain points after 10 ticks or after five ticks. It's not um, explained in the, in, the, in, the, in the question. But these are not all the ticks. There would be many more ticks in between A and B, B and C, and so on. Okay? So, but later on, we can do an experiment related to that. Now, what we know here is that the ticket tape is analyzed and the position is measured after 0, 0,2 seconds. So, important is that the time between each of them is going to be 0, 0,2 seconds. A to B, B to C, and so on. Okay? So, the time between each of the points is, is going to be 0, 0,2 seconds. All right? And the distance between each of those two points is also given in millimeters. Now, the first question is complete the table. Now, in this table, you have the interval. The intervals are A to B, A to C, A to D, A to E, and A to F. And the time now is the time from A. Let's quickly have a marker here so you understand. The first time is from A to B, which is 0, 0,2 seconds. Now the second will be from A to C. Now A to C, be careful, is from here to there, which is 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,2. So the time will be 0, 0,4. The third one is A to D. Now is A. This is 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,2 plus 0, 0,2. That is why it's 0, 0,6 second and so on. That is how they determine the time from A to B to C to D to E and to F. Now, the position, which is the one we have to complete here, it may be a little bit confusing. The first one is 10 millimeters. However, note that in the table here, they want the position in meters. So you have to divide by a thousand because one meter will have one thousand one thousand millimeters okay so the first one is 10 and when you divide you will get 0, 0,01 meters okay now the second and now we are going to use again the marker the second one is from a to c now from a to c will be 10 as you can see here 10 plus 20 because from b to c is 20 therefore the, the position, which is here, the position will be there. That position will be 10 plus 20, which is 30 uh, millimeters, is 0, 0,03. And the same happened with A to D. So let's quickly look at A to D. Now, A to D will be 10 plus 20 plus 30. And that will give us 60. So it is going to be 0, 0,03. 6 meters and so on. Okay, so then we'll have here 0, 
a 1 and final 0, 0,15. You can redo the calculation and if you don't understand clearly, please stop the video, go back, move, rewind the video a little bit so you can see what is going on. Okay. Now, 1.2, question 1.2. For this investigation, write down the independent variable, dependent variable and the investigative question. Okay. So now, what is the independent variable? The independent variable is the one that the person who is doing the investigation change. In this case, we are changing time. That is why you can see here we are measuring the time. So what happened to position if we change the time by 0, 0,2 seconds? What is happening every 0, 0,2 seconds? What is going to happen? Note that it's not constant 0, 0,2. It's every 0, 0,2. So from 0, 0,2 then another 0, 0,2, 0, 0,4. So what will the position be at 0, 0,4? Then after, uh, so on. So time is what we are going to be called the independent variable. We are changing time. We are looking at the position every second uh, or every second time. Okay. So now what is the dependent variable? The dependent variable is the one that will change because we're changing another variable. In this case, is going to be position. Note that position changes because time changes. So the position at 0, 0,2 is 0, 0,01. But when we measure the time another 0, 0,2, which is 0, 0,4, the position did change. And the position is going to be changing as we measure the new time. Now let's go to the investigative question. Now, the investigative question, note that it cannot be a question where the answer is um, yes or no. If the answer is yes or no, then the question is wrong. So let's write here the investigative question. This is the graph paper for the graph that is coming just now. But let's please write first the investigative question, question 1.2.3. Now, there are two ways of writing the investigative question. These two ways to begin with any investigative question could be what is the relationship or how does, for example, it cannot be is there a relationship because then the answer will be yes, there is. Okay, or does position change if time change is incorrect because the answer is yes, it does change. So the answer cannot be yes or no, never. This is not just for physics, but this is for any investigative question, for any investigation, for any subject. Okay, so what is the relationship between the two variables we identify? So, for example, what is the relationship between position and time? Now, generally, we can write here or include the control variable. In this case, the acceleration is the control variable. The acceleration is constant. Okay, but we are not going to speak about that one. We're going to keep it as it was in the question paper. Now, now how does time affect position? Okay, so these are two examples of possible investigative question. Now, for the next one is to draw a graph of position versus time. So to draw the graph, here is the graph paper. I have to make it smaller. I'm very sorry, we'll, we'll enlarge it just now. Um, we are going to first draw the axis. Now, not the following. In the x-axis, we are generally going to write down the independent variable. And in this case, will be time. So here would be time with the unit, which is second. In the y-axis, generally, is the dependent variable. And in this case, will be position. I'm going to write x and meter, which is the unit. Here at the origin, it's going to be the zero all right so now we're going to the uh, scale that we are going to use know that in the time we have zero comma two four six eight and one so let's see what will be the more comfortable one i'm going to enlarge this side here so let's this is just one example if we say zero comma one zero comma two zero comma three you can see here the darker lines every 10 the lines zero comma four zero comma five zero comma 6 and 0, 0,7 is not enough because we need um, up to 1,0. Uh, so we need up to 1. Therefore, with this, it's not enough. So we are going to go back and then make it to 0, 0,2. 0, 0,2, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,6, 0, 0,8, and so on. Now, we are going to do the same in the y-axis. So if you start with 0, 0,0, um, one, for instance, you will have 0, 0,1, 2, let's uh, draw the lines, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8 and 9 so it won't be enough though so we're going to write it also every 2 and it will be 0 comma 0 2 because we're starting with 0 comma 0 1 you see so 0 comma 0 2 this will be 0 comma 0 4 0 comma um, 0 6 0 comma 0 8 and this is going to be um, 0 comma 1 0 comma 1 there then it's going to be 0 comma 1 2 0 comma 1 4 0 comma um, no, not 1 0 comma 0 comma 1 6 and I think now we are fine 0 comma 1 5 is the last one so we are fine now so this is how the axis will look with the scales all right so i hope you understand how to do it uh, slowly now let's note the following before we start plotting here this between each of them between these there are 10 dots as well as between this one is 10 dots so the first thing is you need to make sure you understand what represent each of them okay now, the best way to know how much represent each small dot will be dividing 10 by 0, 0,2. That will give us 0, 0,02. Now, this means that every small line here will represent 0, 0,02. And the same happened with the y-axis. So you can do it and you will see exactly um, how many represent each of those little lines. But let's plot without waiting more and the first one we have is um we're going to plot uh, only one or two and then the other ones i will just show you the plot okay so this one is 0 comma 2 for the x 0 comma 0 1 for the y so 0 comma um 2 for the x is right on the dot here and 0 comma 0 1 if you're going to count here is right in between eh? so it's when you count to five it's um, 1 2 3 4 and 5 so that one there is a 0 comma 5 so here is the first point that we have to plot that is the first point that we have to plot you make sure you can use the ruler if we enlarge it a little bit you can see it there is the dots going there one two uh, sorry one two three four and five that is number five that is the uh, first plotted point if we carry on here we have now the second one zero comma zero three so zero comma zero three will be also um this is zero comma four eh? is zero comma four all the way zero comma four up here you use a ruler and then here will be after five as well so it's one two three four and five here will be the zero comma zero three and if you use your ruler then you move up here and then your plotted line will be there so that is how to plot. I'm going to plot all of the points and then I'll be back with you. All right, we are back with all the points plotted. So those are all the points plotted. Make sure you plot it correctly. Do it slow practice because it is very, very important. And then we have to draw the graph. No, now the graph must be a best fit graph, no straight line. Best fit does not mean straight line. So let's quickly use a line and you will see what happened. Now, if I use a straight line, it's impossible to make a straight line because it will go all the way there, okay? So if I make a straight line this way, there's always going to be too many points out of the dots. Now, we are also not going to join points. This is not joining points. We have to draw a best fit line. So is the line that pass for a more density of points going to be? So it will be smooth line that is going to eventually go through the point or through the part of the plotted point where more points are. It doesn't need to be a straight line. It's neither going to be a joining point. So there may be points that are out of the line, either on top or at the bottom. You can see this side. I make a little mistake it should be a little bit more to the right that will be the correct one so this is the graph that you are trying to draw it's not straight line it's not going to be also joining point so this is 
our graph. I hope it helped. It could be a little bit tricky and then um, that's it. Now, the final question, just to finish, let me enlarge again, what type of motion is represented? Now, you, you can use a straight dot to find out the type of motion, or in this case, you can use the graph. Now, you can see that the dots are increasing the distance between the dots. So, the motion is going to be the motion of rectilinear acceleration motion or uniformly accelerated motion. You can see it in the shape of the graph as well that this is going to be a rectilinear and um, uniformly acceleration or accelerated motion. So we're going to write it here for the answer of that question. It's going to be the uniformly uniformly accelerated motion okay so that is the final question so guys i hope you understand i hope this graph will help you it's the most uh, it could be a very tricky uh, question drawn graph or plotted graph is tricky and it's important for the upcoming grade 12. i hope it helped please leave a comment you can suggest you can ask questions you can ask me to make a specific video that you need that you're struggling with and i'll be pleased to to do it subscribe so you can get the next video that is coming thank you for watching and uh, good luck